Did you watch my video last week revealing the secrets behind the first five eye-opening statistics related to year-end fundraising? Well, I've got five more stats to make your day. Keep watching and be sure not to miss out. Last week, I shared five statistics from an article written by Ronnie Gomez of Neon One. If you didn't see that, be sure to click on the video above to watch right after this video. Today, I'm going to share the final five of the 10 year-end giving statistics every fundraiser should know and the secrets behind each that only seasoned fundraisers know. Let's get started. Stat number six and the secret. 36% of nonprofits raise less than 10% of their annual funds from their year-end ask. This is one of the few statistics that shows what can happen if you don't raise money correctly. That just doing something isn't enough. Without an effective plan and strategy, you too could see less than 10% of your annual funds raised just like more than one third of the organizations in this study found. Evaluating the results from past campaigns and especially past year-end campaigns is critical. You need to know in advance if your efforts are yielding good fruit. Remember the adage, the definition of insanity is doing the same things over and over expecting different results. Stat and secret number seven, two thirds of those making donations do no research before giving. On one hand, that's very disappointing. As a donor myself to nonprofits, churches and missionaries, I make it a point to research every group or individual I give to. However, on the other hand, this doesn't surprise me at all. One of the first principles I learned in development and fundraising was people give to people justified by the cause. That means that people give to someone they know and trust. That may or may not include research on the person or the organization they represent. And from that standpoint, it makes sense. And to that degree, it's okay. People should have a right to give to whomever they want. But as a nonprofit and as someone who raised their own salary and expenses, I'm committed to do two things no matter what, build trust, and provide results on how a donor's gift was used. I believe that if you do those two things well, you'll have a donor for a lifetime. This study doesn't tell us how long these people have been giving to the organization or if they ever gave before. It could be that their first or a one-time gift was given and they never intend to give again. But to acquire a donor for life, which we all want, I believe it's critical to build trust and provide results. Trust is earned, and once earned, in most cases, unless there's a blatant violation of trust, stays with you and your organization. I've mentioned that I raise my own salary and expenses and have done so for over 37 years. We have donors who have never missed a month of giving for all those 37 years, and that's loyalty built on trust. Providing the outcome or results of a donor's giving is very important. So even though donors might not ask for a report, you still should provide one. That's the justified by the cause portion of the development principle. People give emotionally, but back it up intellectually with facts, and results are part of the facts. Stat and secret number eight, 79% of volunteers also donate to their organization. This statistic validates a long-held belief I've always had and what I've always seen from our volunteers. There is a commitment when someone gives a loan but combine a volunteer opportunity with that giving and the commitment level to the organization and the staff of that organization goes through the roof. Volunteering to an organization be, builds an ownership in that organization and that cause. It also builds a bond and, in, and most certainly trust with an individual or individuals. When donors can put a face to an organization, they also give more and working shoulder to shoulder with an organizational leader on the front lines will, in most cases, develop an unbreakable bond. So it's no wonder that nearly 80% of volunteers surveyed also give to that organization. Stat and secret number nine, 59.9% .9 of nonprofits make between one and three donor touches for their year-end campaign. If you've been in fundraising and development any length of time, you know that it takes multiple touch points to get a gift from a donor. Just as your fiance or spouse wouldn't have said yes to marry you on your first date, a donor doesn't say yes on their first letter, call, or visit. There needs to be conversations, discussions, and multiple dates. The same is true with our donors. Letters, emails, calls, and even visits build a bond that leads to a gift. Even the most deeply committed donors get busy, distracted, and might forget to give after the first touch point, a letter or an email. 
They might even forget after a phone call. So follow-up needs to be made. Sometimes additional information sent before a decision or a gift is made. Another principle I learned early on was ask and ask often. I don't mean to the point where you become annoying, but sometimes people need to be asked more than once, even on the same campaign and reminded of a commitment they made earlier. Think of the organizations you give to. Most likely you give because you were asked and asked more than once. Just a reminder, if you didn't click the link above for the year-end strategies video, do so now. Listed above is the entire year-end video playlist. Two years worth of year-end videos to watch and to implement. Stat and secret number 10. Direct mail is the most popular medium for year-end asks, followed by email, an organization's website, and in-person asks. I know that one medium that's taken the biggest beating over the last two decades is direct mail. Since the advent of electronic mail, prognosticators have been predicting the demise of direct mail. Who bothers to read snail mail anymore is the mantra. Well, I'll tell you, hundreds of millions of people every year, that's who. If you haven't noticed just how effective direct mail is, you're probably not someone who reads or likes direct mail letters in the first place. I've found the biggest critics are those who don't respond to direct mail letters themselves. They complain about the length. They complain about the style of writing. They complain about the expense. The fact is direct mail is wrong for so many reasons, except it really works. Our organization ma mails millions of letters each year and we see astounding results. It was our lifeblood during the pandemic. We mail between 14 and 16 times a year, a little more than once a month, and send one email per month, and we raise multiple millions of dollars using direct mail and email marketing each year. What people fail to realize is that we aren't consistently mailing to people who don't like direct mail. We've been able to find hundreds of thousands of people who do like direct mail, and we send to just them. If you want to succeed at year end, Send a dear friend letter to those who like direct mail and send a highly personalized letter to your critical few, the 20% that bring, up, bring in 80% of your income or your major donors, those giving 1,000 or more in a single gift each year. And as the statistics prove, email marketing websites and without a doubt personal visits round out the most popular mediums for raising money at year end. And I would add a combination of those, including a phone and video call. I hope you found the final five statistics equally as fascinating as the first five. Implement the secrets that I reveal and you'll see some amazing results at year end. I've developed quite a few videos related to year end. Watch them all using the year end playlist. I plan to release at least two to three more year end related videos this year, including one on little known giving options for asset giving. So be sure to hit the subscribe button and click the bell to be notified when the next video is released. And don't forget to hit the like button and add a comment below if there was a stat you especially liked or even disagreed with. Remember, if you have fundraising questions, submit them on Twitter at DevFStrats and use the hashtag Jim and Java uh, or on Instagram at DevEffectivenessStrategies or simply email me at developmenteffectivenessm at gmail.com. And as always, I wish you the best as you strive to increase your income and reach the goal of becoming fully funded. Thank you very much.